Welcome to Faith City Outreach, where your host, Marina Maria, reaches out to the world to discuss Christian topics and providing biblical solutions, as well as praying for the nations. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. The music in this broadcast is provided courtesy of Zapsplat.com. Now, here is your host, Marina Maria. Welcome to Faith City Outreach. This is Marina Maria with today's special guest, Pastor Stanley Rios from Christ on the Res Ministries, which is located in Southern Arizona. Pastor Rios is a member of the Tohono O'odham Nation. The Tohono O'odham Nation are also known as the Papago Indians, which means desert people. The Tohono O'odham Nation resides south to Sonora, Mexico, and north to central Arizona. Thank you so much, Pastor Rios, for being on Faith City Outreach today to discuss a topic called Stony Hearts Among Believers, which is a realistic topic to talk about because this is happening to many believers in, in these times especially. And God's word sheds light about this. And we will bring that light forward through his word. Pastor Amen. Rios, before we discuss Stony Hearts, can you please share a little bit about your testimony to the, to the listeners so that we know you as a person? Sure. Uh, first off, uh, thank you so much for inviting me to be uh, part of your ministry tonight. Uh, it's a great privilege. I'm very honored to be here tonight. Um, my testimony, it could go on forever. But uh, basically, um, I uh, was uh, saved through my wife. My wife was a, a believer. I was not at the time we, we met. Uh, but, you know. Being a young couple, finally in love, all that. She, she, you know, brought me to the Lord, and so uh, at at that time, my walk with was was a very uh, wasn't very strong, but uh, she kept at it, <laughs> and uh, and you know, she kept bringing me to church, and and Holy Spirit was doing a lot of work on my heart during that time, and. And eventually, uh, didn't take that long for me to to give my heart over completely to the Lord and just did a complete 180. And I've been walking with the Lord now for almost 30 years. So, um, and uh, it's been a, it's been a great walk. Uh, I am a member of the Tohono O'odham Nation uh, from the uh, Santa Verde District, right outside of Tucson. That's where I was uh, raised at. Uh, then uh, left there. Well, probably when I was about 15 or so, went out into the world and eventually met my wife. And uh, uh, the Lord called me to uh, the reservation, back to the reservation back in 2002. Um, and uh, it was, it's uh, been an incredible journey the, this whole time. So we've been preaching out there since 2002, preaching on the radio, preaching in just about every village out there. Um, and uh, uh, back in 2010 is when uh, we really started pushing along the border, uh, along the because the the reservation is so huge. Just as you stated earlier, it goes from northern Mexico all the way in through central Arizona. Uh, but the border cut the the autumn people in half. So half, some of them are in Mexico, northern Mexico. The rest are here in the U.S. So. I've been taking prayer teams down to that border fence for since 2010, so 12 years now, or 10 years now. Uh, so it's been a, a great seeing God really move in a powerful way is out in the middle of the desert. So it's a, it's been a great walk with the Lord. I've been very, very, very blessed, very, um, very much blessed. I've uh, been married 27 years, had two beautiful daughters. I have a small farm, <laughs> cats, dogs, chickens, what have you. So, uh, where do you live? I live actually. I live in Maricopa, Arizona. Okay. 
So um, uh, we travel on on the reservation, just just right across the I-8 freeway from us. So, uh, but I I live in Maricopa. I uh, work here in Tempe, and uh, you know I still have to pay the bills. So, uh, but it uh, it's been a great a great walk with the Lord. Amen. I'm curious to find out at what point or how many years after. Um, did you become a, uh, or did you receive God's calling to become a pastor after oh. you had received Christ into your life? Yeah, let's see here. So it was like uh, probably about 2001. Uh, I received the Lord shortly after I got married. So that's been, you know, back in the 90s. Uh, and then, uh, was discipled you know, went to a couple churches, was discipled. Um, and I said, that was an amazing time too. God already knew who he was going to have in my path uh, as my spiritual fathers. And so you know, a number of pastors came into, into, into my walk with me and disciple me. And, uh, and back in 2001, uh, you know, God called me out to, to become a pastor. And so uh, that was like in November of 2001, right before the holidays. So by July of 2002, I got on all the credentials and what have you. And then we went out and did our first uh, church plant. So yeah, so I've been speaking the word of God since like uh, powerfully since 2002, uh, you know, with the title of pastor. So it's a, wow, you're making me go down memory lane here, sister. (laughs) I'm just always curious to find out about that. Yeah. How did your parents um, impact your spiritual life as a Christian? And if your parents didn't impact you um, in your life, then who did? Well, uh, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up because no one in my family is saved. My immediate family, my my parents, uh, uh, my my siblings have a, a sister and two brothers. Um, so I, I wasn't raised in a Christian home per se. Um, and looking back, I can see um, there was times in my uh, when I was a young teenager, young person, where God had you know put people in my path and they were speaking the word to me, but I just didn't listen. Uh, my heart was too hard at that time. It really wasn't until I met my wife, Babette. Uh, we were in college. Uh, I just came out of the military, and I was going to uh, finish my degree there in, uh, here in Phoenix, in uh, Phoenix Community College. And there was this girl, you know, one of my classes. like, wow, she's pretty cute. I'm going to get to know her. And she didn't have anything to do with me because I wasn't saved and whatnot. But the uh, opposites attract. <laughs> so uh that's how that all started uh and uh and my parents they they weren't saved but you know once i became saved um you know uh really started preaching to my family you know and so eventually my my mother when right before she passed she did accept the lord in her heart my father uh he did not accept the lord in his heart but it wasn't through me that he was saved. It was through one of my family members, who, you know, my uh, aunts and my uncles and what have you, that were kept preaching to him, preaching to him. So eventually, you know, I know uh, that he accepted the Lord in his heart. Uh, and at that time, uh, you know, right, he was in the hospital, then he was in hospice. But, but my daughter, uh, I have two daughters, uh, Gabrielle and Emma. Gabrielle, uh, she's the oldest. So, she was probably about 14 or so uh, when my dad passed on. So I, I remember her writing a, a really nice little note for him, uh, gave him a Bible, put it in the bag, and she gave it to him. And he didn't know what to do with it at first. <laughs> uh, eventually, you know, my, you know, she came up to me. She's like, Dad, I had dreams about Grandpa, you know, that uh, he had opened up the Bible again when he's reading it. Why have you? So. You know, that was just a confirmation to me that, uh, you know, dad had received the Lord. So 
uh, really happy about that. So neither one of them were saved until the, the end of their lives. But, uh, you know, God kept opening up those doors opportunity to, to speak the word into their hearts. And same thing for my brothers and my sisters, too. So uh, and that was a that was a kind of a difficult time uh, because, you know, being Alton, being native, you know, we have our own culture, this, that and the other. Uh, the hen dog and, uh, you know, Edith always, you know, the elder brother and all that. Uh, uh, so preaching out there, you know, especially to my family, you know, they're pushing him away, you know, pushing the Lord away. They want to hear it, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, uh, God, you know, makes a way for the, those, the words that were spoken into him being that seed in their hearts. And, and uh, so all these years later, their, their heart's a lot softer than it was, you know, when, when we were younger. So it was really uh, amazing to see how the Lord moves on people with the hard hearts. Right. Now, there had to have been somebody, though, who impacted your spiritual life. Oh, yeah. That would be uh, that? Brother Lanusa, the contact that got us together. Oh, Pastor Paul Lanusa? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Oh, you, he was my first pastor. So, and he saw what God was doing, you know, and he brought him, brought me into underneath his wing. He mentored me and whatnot. Uh, then I went off to, left his church and went to another church, uh, um, Calumbach Community, um, and uh, stayed there for a while. And now this is interesting. So, so it kind of felt like Moses, you know, uh, Moses was raised in Pharaoh's house and what have you. I was a, uh, Calumbach Community Church. It was a perfect church. It was only like 15 minutes away from the home. You know, we were doing all these building projects. I was on the board. Uh, my wife was uh, uh, teaching Sunday school and whatnot. Uh, I thought my my daughters were going to be, you know, going to school there because we had plans for, uh, you know, at that time, they're just on a piece of paper uh, to build a high school. I mean, all that's come to rotation. You know, there is a campus there on, on um on, on church grounds, but uh, then God comes in and he, you know, says, no, you're going to go out to the middle of the desert and preach the word of God. <laughs> so what did I'm you think? Him. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm did like, you what? think? What came to your mind when he said that? Uh, well, you know, it, it was, did you say no more, way? Yeah, no, I, I, I tried not to say no way, but uh, <laughs> I was like, I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so Babette and I, we packed up the girls and we took off out into out to a place called Hikiwan and uh, met Pres Pastor Brown out there. He was another influence, uh, influence on my life. And Pastor Brown, he's gone on to be with the Lord, but he'd been out there for years and years. Then I ran. Uh, there was another uh, Assemblies God teacher, a uh, pastor, brother, uh, brother England uh, down there in Ajo area. And uh, he was a really big influence on me as well. Uh, both of these men have gone on to be with the Lord, but uh, they would speak to me of, uh, you know, the Shekinah, the glory, the Shekinah glory would come into the, uh, in, into their, you know, they were just out in the open. They didn't have buildings at that time, but the glory of God mm -hmm. would come in and it would just, it would just hover, just hover for days. They, they you know, uh Hikiwan, uh they're way out in the middle of the desert close to the border so they um what pastor did was uh uh he uh uh dug a well put the, like a two inch pipe in and so back in those days uh they were out in wagons so people would come in it would take them at least a day to get to to where he had dug the well to fill up their water bottles or their uh, barrels and stuff so then they just kind of hang out and have camp meetings out there. That's when the Shekinah kind of glory would come down. You know, it's just amazing. Just amazing. And I've seen that happen uh, out, in, out in the middle of the desert. Just, you know, the, the glory comes in like a fog. Um, and it just, it just settles down. So you how know, do and, the people react when that happens? Uh, they're uh, confused at first. Well, because uh, uh, that has happened in Santa Rosa Village, uh, where the glory of God comes down. And I could see it settling down just over the entire village. And uh, and then, you know, people are just, you know, you can see them coming out of the houses because there's something going on. 
we were having a uh, revival meeting there, and um, they didn't come out to the revival meeting. Just a few of them came, but you know, going through the village the next day, they're like, we just felt something, you know, just felt different, you know, felt really good. You know, everybody was telling me it felt really good, Pastor, really did. So they and, couldn't understand it, but they did experience yeah, it. Exactly, and you, you know, you get to a chance that chance to witness to them and to to uh, uh, to speak the gospel into their hearts. And so, yeah, it's, it's happened. It's even happened when I was on the radio program down on the reservation. I, you could just feel the Shekinah glory coming into the radio station uh, when I was on the air. And I was like, man, I just, there's just a heavy presence of God uh, in the radio station. Even now, you know, with this interview, you just feel this presence of God just coming in. And it's just mm-hmm. that, yeah. that, type of experience and encounter that you know uh i've had and uh taking teams out especially uh teams down to the border you know i have uh well not during the summer months because it's just too hot but you know when it cools down uh you know i take teams uh most of my team is from green valley a bunch of retirees uh but i've had teams from oklahoma you know navajo land hopi land uh, they come down and they absolutely have no idea of what the border is like. And then we, you know, praise and worship, speaking the word, uh, and, and the Shekinah glory comes in again. It just settles down right where we're at, out in the middle of the desert. <laughs> wow. It's an amazing thing. That's powerful. Very powerful. Yes. Very powerful. Yes, it yeah. is. Pastor Reels, what are the challenges of, uh, being a pastor and um, at the reservation. Well, uh, only the strong survive. I'll be honest with you. The only, so, what, what do you I mean, mean by that? What I mean by that is that uh, when you go on to the reservation, first off, you had to be prayed up, you know, and you had to have a, a very strong heart, uh, and uh, you had to have a very determined heart, um, and. Over the years, what I've learned is that you have to really humble yourself before the Lord when things get really tough. Because you, there, there were times when no one showed up for church. You know, you come in and, and we had, you know, it, it wasn't the building that was bringing people in. Mm-hmm. You know, because we had everything. We had, you know, the, the children's services. We had, a you know, preaching hall, altar, musicians. What have, they just didn't show up. They didn't want to come into church, you know. Uh, so you had to really, uh, really humble yourself before the Lord and ask why and ask, call in the, the flock, so to speak. And uh, and and God will uh, will give you uh, the wisdom on how to preach his word. You know, uh, when uh, you know, when well, I, I remember going from uh, our church building there in Santa Rosa. Uh, going down to uh, uh, cover wells. And I was like, Lord, your people are too far apart, too many. You know, it was taking me forever to pick people up, come back, what have you. And then the door opened up for the radio program to open up on the reservation. And then that, that was, a, you know, a godsend there. And uh, you'd be able to preach the, the gospel on the air because it reached, the footprint reached across the whole reservation and then some into Mexico, like, you know, all the way to people were telling me, you know, they heard me all the way into Rocky Point area and, uh, you know, wow. with the gospel. Yeah. And that was just an amazing time. So uh, so what in what I mean by um, getting back to the only the strong survive, it's just that you have to be determined to to stay the course where God has called you, because I've seen so many people that. You know, so many pastors, they come into the reservation and, and their their hearts are well intended. It's not that they have bad hearts or what have you, but when you come in from an urban environment, coming out into the middle of the desert, I mean, it things change, you know. You know so they uh, don't they don't last too long? No, they don't last very long. Or if they do stay there, you know, uh, a year, maybe two, uh, I think five years is the, the most I've seen some pastors hang out. Uh, and so, um, you know, it's, uh, I've seen it as less than a month, you know, because if, 
you know, especially when you're a young pastor, you're bringing a young wife, young family, you're out there and there's nothing out there, you know. Right. Um, so now there's you... no Starbucks. There's no uh, grocery stores. There's no, you know, going to Taco Bell, what have you. All the conveniences that you enjoy here in the urban environment are mm-hmm. nothing. There's nothing out there, nothing out there. And so you have to learn to to adapt and overcome those obstacles. Uh, and uh, and you, you and in many ways you have to be called to be a pastor out there. You really do. You have to be called. Um, and you know, you may say it in, you know, verbally, but it's, it's kind of something that's really deep in your heart that you're just like, okay, I'm going to preach out here. I'm going to preach to these people who are unsaved, unlocked, you know, they don't know the Lord. And, uh, and then, yeah, it's just, it's really, really difficult to preach out there. You know, now a lot of things, what you said, it reminds me of what a pastor told me. Um, I'm not sure if you know, pastor Coda, but he remembered or he actually shares sometimes that um, his experience when he was in the reservation. And um, just like you mentioned that um, he never really had any friends, never had people go and visit him when he was a pastor or for a long time. And now that he's back into, um, you know, he's in living in Prescott now, it's not in the reservation anymore. Now he makes a point to go and encourage and visit pastors as much as he can. Because yeah, he knows I, I do, he knows the experience. Oh yeah, I've done that. I, I'm doing that now. I mean, uh, you know, because uh, you know, I'll go out and and just kind of visit, check up on everybody, and see what's going on, hang out with them. And some of them aren't there anymore. Some of them are, and so, and I can tell that they do appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, someone to stop by and just fellowship with them and encourage them. And, and that's, you know, and the pastors that are listening now, uh, I would say to you pastors that, uh, you know, don't just, it, it's not the, uh, it's not the, uh, you know, if you don't feel lonely, uh, just out in the reservation, even in an urban environment, uh, mm-hmm. go visit the other pastors. Doesn't matter if they're of your flock or of your faith, so to speak, mm-hmm. or of your denomination or what have you. Uh, you know, they're still people. They're still God's children, and they you you know they need that fellowship with you as much as you need the fellowship with them. Uh, because iron sharpens iron. It's it's written in the word. Iron sharpens iron. Right. And yeah. And so. Uh, yeah, that uh, that would do uh, much to encourage each other during this time. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Pastor Reels, what have you been learning about the word lately, about stony hearts? I know you've been really um, um, studying the word about this, and we had talked about it at least about two weeks ago, and you were mm-hmm. really working on the responses and and also the scriptures. Can you please explain what the Bible says about a stony heart? Well, Scripture is very clear on a stony heart, you know, that God wants to remove the stoniness that is there. And he wants to give us a heart, take the heart of stone out and and bring it uh, and replace it with the heart of flesh uh, filled with the, the his fruits, the fruits of the spirit. Um, and. Uh, and the key thing there when we're talking about stony hearts is to not push away the hands that took the nails on the cross. Because it, he's going to reach down inside of you and pull that stony heart out. But so many times we see the, uh, the sheep, the flock, his children, you know, when that heart comes and you feel the touch of God on your heart, you know it. It's him. And you're like, oh, no, Lord, not this area. You know, the, I like this area. Too much. You know, this area is kind of, you can have everything else uh, in, in my heart except this little area here. And God's like, no, I, I want your whole heart. I want every chamber of your heart. I made your heart. I made your heart. I know your heart. Uh, but, you know, you have to give everything over to, to the Lord uh, in order for him to truly replace, you know, the stoniness that is there. And, 
and replace it with the heart of flesh. And that's what the, the Lord really wants is for us to be filled with the fleshly heart uh, that is filled with the fruits of his spirit. And, uh, and you know, because he, he wants to not just fill us with the, the seeds of the, of the fruits of the spirit, but he wants to grow that those seeds. He wants to nurture those seeds. He wants to come in and, 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 and uh, water the seeds with the, the living waters that he has. Amen. And he desires to do that. You know, and if we were just to just lay our hearts down, you know, at the altar, truly lay our hearts down at the altar and bring the stony hearts in, uh, uh, you know, he would be doing a, a marvelous thing, a wondrous thing. But I believe that time is coming, you know, at time we're in the midst of this COVID-19. It's it's a reset, you know, and this is a wake up call for many of us. And and notice when when we speak of a stony heart um, and God wanting to to remove the stoniness, you know, your heart can be full of jailhouse tats. Amen. It can be filled with, you know. All the all it can be an alcoholic heart. It can be a a, a a drug addicted heart. It can be you know a gangster heart. It can be a prison heart. It can be you know a heart that's been torn apart and what have you. Just bringing your heart just as it is with all the wounds and the hurts and the and the scars and and brokenness that is there. You you can even bring the heart of your broken marriage to the altar. Amen. And, and sometimes God, that's when we, usually we do, we, right? When we, exactly, we're broken. Yeah. yeah, you just bring your heart just as it is, mm-hmm. all full of, you know, of drugs, you know, tattooed out, you know, uh, needle marks, what have you. It, you can bring the heart, your homosexual heart there mm-hmm. at the altar, your lesbian heart there at the altar, you know, your, your drug dealing heart, you know, your prostituted You've been prostituting yourself out, you know, for years and years and years. And everything that Satan tells you that you're you're too far deep into your sin, uh, that is a lie from the pit of hell. And so, uh, no, I don't believe that uh, there's a, a hardened heart out there that cannot be touched by God's hand, by God's glory, by God's mercy and his grace. And, and most of all, the great love that he has for his people and his compassion he has for his flock. Amen. Uh, You bring your heart just as it is to the altar and let the Holy Spirit deal with it. Amen. So God is always open to changing our hearts. But the question is, are we always willing to surrender it all? Mm. Are we willing to, to give it to him, to return back to him? I, I believe that that uh, that there is going to be a great outpouring of His Spirit during this time. We're kind of like in a, in a you know. Well, I I I feel I've been feeling this in my spirit ever since this COVID thing started. You know that that Holy Spirit is hovering over the U.S. You know He's hovering over. Uh, the entire United States or over the whole globe, really. But in particular, you know, over the U.S., he is hovering over the, the emptiness that is in, in, our, in our nation, the dark places, amen, that when we look in the book of Genesis, you know, it talks about Holy Spirit moving, hovering over the, the waters of the deep. And, and I feel that the uh, I've been feeling in my spirit that it, it's the same kind of thing right now. Uh, Ho- Holy Spirit has been hovering over our nation and he's going to be moving. And, amen. And, the, and people who are listening, they need to understand that Holy Spirit is attracted to the emptiness of your heart. Just as he was hovering over the, the forming of the world in Genesis 1, we read it. You know, how he was hovering over the vastness of the emptiness of and the forming of the earth. So it is with the the heart of uh, of this nation. Amen. Uh, the hearts of every man, woman, and child. It doesn't matter your, your economic strata, where you're at. It doesn't matter, you know, how smart you are or how, how educated you are or how much money you have. 
you know, uh, when we're talking about the hardness of your heart, it's sin that has caused the hardness of so many hearts here. So, you know, and so God is waiting for, you know, he's going to be coming into the empty places of your hearts. He's going to be coming into the wilderness places, so to speak, of your hearts. He's going to be coming into the, the hard places. And there's a lot of hard places in, in people's hearts. You know, we we can't even begin to understand the 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 heart of uh, the human heart and all the things that is the trauma that's been there, you know, the, the, the hurts and the pains that are there, but yeah, God's forgiveness. In, yeah. And coming mm-hmm. in with the, his great agape love and that you cannot overwhelm or you cannot uh, uh, be, uh, uh, well, you cannot, oh, how should I put it? You cannot withstand the, the love of Christ. When it comes in, amen, mm-hmm. it is just going to come and change you. It's going to pull you towards him. It's going to, you know, cajole you. It's going to speak to you. It's going to move you, you know, to the point of tears and then some. Uh, but he is coming and he's going to be coming in a great wave. You know, just as scripture says, that he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh, all flesh. And uh, uh, we're going to see a great, great harvest of uh you know souls to come into the kingdom amen uh and i can't wait i cannot wait i can't amen. wait pastor rios so the warning sign of a story stony heart would be sin right yes yes anything else um sin is a, is the the only thing that i can think of uh sin is a, is what kept me well i thought was keeping me from uh from the master from from having that relationship with jesus god the father god the son god the holy spirit uh and that i was listening at that time you know before i became saved i was listening to all the lies of the enemy you know you're no good you're basically you're just a drunk little indian you know you're an uneducated indian you're you're a poor little indian you know the who are you to, to come into the knowledge of Christ and to to uh, uh, to be used by God, you know? And uh, and, and I believed those lies for the longest time, you know, uh, until again I, until I met my wife and um, and she began to speak to the Word of God to me, the truth, Amen. The truth and the truth of the matter is that God loves us, Amen. God mm-hmm. desires to have that relationship with us. God, did, he died on the cross for your sins and mine. And and there is nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. You know, uh, it, it, it's an amazing thing. It's a free gift, uh, amen, to his people. He died on the cross for all of us. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's time that, you know, you we quit listening to the lies of the enemy. And, uh, you know, because he is the father of lies. He is the father of lies. And uh, and, uh, and and God will wash you clean. I guarantee you, if you are a sinner and you're covered from head to toe with sin and you're dirty and what have you, uh, you don't have to stay that way. You don't have to, you know, stay in the muck and the mire of a sin and because that's where exactly where Satan wants you to stay at. You know, mm-hmm. when you look at the relationship of a sheep versus a pig, a pig will wallow in the mud and the muck and the mire. Why? Because he's a pig. But a sheep, a lamb, you know, uh, you know, they will cry out. They'll cry out, and because they, they don't like being in the muck and the mire. You know. Mm-hmm. That's the Navajo side of me coming out, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because uh, you know, because we're sheep herders, you know, and, and, and there's been plenty, plenty of times in my younger days when you know, sheep falls into a pit or what have you, or lamb, you have to go in there and pull them out. So, so it is with Christ, Amen. He is the shepherd, and when his sheep fall into a pit and they go into the muck and the mire of uh, of sin, uh, he will pull you out. Amen. He will pull you out. And I'm speaking also to to uh, those of you who once walked with the Lord. You were a pastor. You were a worship leader. You were 
prayer leader. You were part of the church and what have you. And for whatever reason, you know, you walked away. And Satan's been telling you lies and that you're the sin that you've done. You know, God's never going to forgive it. What have you. That's life in the pit of hell. Because he still has a purpose to, for you, brother or sister, who is listening to, to me right now. He still has plans for you. He still needs you to come back into the, into the fight, amen, and retrieve all those souls that are out there. And, and he desires to, to reestablish his a relationship with you, amen, amen. Mm-hmm. Because our, our relationship with the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, it is a heart-to-heart thing, amen. There's so many, when you go and you do a search in, you know, any Bible app you have, you know, just look at the Type in that word heart, hit hit enter, and see how many verses come up uh, with that one word, a heart. Amen. It's a, an amazing thing. Ama- an amazing thing. Praise God. Amen. This is Marina Maria, and I'm talking to today's special guest, Pastor Stanley Rios from Christ on the Res Ministries, located in Southern Arizona. We are discussing the topic of stony hearts among believers, which is a reality of what is happening today to many believers. And God's word sheds light about this. But there's hope. Pastor Rios, how do we avoid having our hearts hardened? You know, uh, especially that is, time. Yeah, that, and the way I I... I have um, not gone back to to uh, a hardened heart. It is that uh, one? It's it's your your. It's all revolves around your relationship with the Lord. You draw close to Him; He draws close to you. You know, so you know you you do the the things that are are going to be beneficial to you. You know, you read your word, you, uh, you know, you pray, you know, everyone can pray. I don't, you know, uh, this deal about, you know, all oh, only pastors can pray only, you know, the, the priest right. can pray. What have you. No, you pray. Uh, mm-hmm. I became an intercessor. I didn't even know how to pray. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and God showed me how to pray. And, uh, you know, it, it's been a great, you know, that area of my life has been fantastic. But re- reading the word, you know, that that is another thing, you know, uh, because uh, the, there's many, you know, many brothers and sisters out there saying, well, I can't read the word. You know, that's for a priest or what have you. No, you grab a Bible, you begin to read the word. You ask God to reveal things to you in prayer and reveal things to you uh, in uh in, in your your prayer time, you know, case in point is in uh, we find it in Acts chapter four, where uh, the disciples were before all the Sadducees and what have you, the, the religious leaders of the day, and they were looking at you know these these uh, you know priests or the 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 religious leaders were looking at the uh, the disciples, and one thing if you look in Acts chapter four, I can't remember which verse it is, but uh, you'll see that you know the verse says uh, something to the effect that they were with they they were with Jesus, they were with Jesus, and they were uneducated men. These uh, Sadducees and you know all these high religious mm-hmm. leaders back in those days, they realized that these were just these these disciples were just fishermen, mm-hmm. but they've been walking with the Lord. They they saw how they you know he was treating them how he was discipling them and so you know they were filled with the Holy Spirit and so uh, yes you can read a Bible yes you can you can go you know and, and pick up a Bible and read it and and learn and educate yourself and 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 move in the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit Amen and the same thing with your prayer time that you know your prayer time is critical and. Also, fellowshipping, find yourself a good church, mm-hmm. a good Bible-based church, you know, and God will bring in the the um, the spiritual mothers and the spiritual fathers that you need to grow in Christ, amen, and uh, and he will lead you there, amen, just as he led me, 
You know, I hadn't, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't even know what a Bible was when I first met my wife. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she gave me a Bible for Christmas and I was like, I was looking at it and I was like, well, if I touch it, am I going to burst into flames? And she was like, no, you're not going to burst into flames. I was like, are you sure? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but it, yeah, that was our first Christmas together, and I still have that Bible, and it's a uh, very precious to me. Yeah. Pastor Reels, I know there's some listeners out there listening to this uh, interview, and they're actually admitting that they have stony hearts. Yes. And I'm wondering what. Do they need to do what is the very first thing they need to do pastor Rios? well they need to get before the lord and repent of their stony heart they need to come in you know in the place of prayer and a place of humility and realize that uh, it's it's not your it's not your money it's not the other man, the other woman. It's not your job. It's not the, anything in, that this world offers that that is going to change your heart. Because there are, you know, we, as a society, we're we're running after that all the time. You know, I'm going to make you know big bucks and what have you, or this, that, and the other. And 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 what the world offers is not going to save you. It's only uh, a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that is going to save you. And you come bring your hard heart down before the altar and, and, and ask God to take it away from you and, uh, and to remove those things that are not of him, to give you a heart of flesh. You just need to simply come to the cross and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And he will come in and he will do the rest. Amen. Mm-hmm. It's a very simple process. It's not right. hard. Yeah, exactly. So one is repentance. And um, I'm also curious to find out, I know that our stony hearts can affect our relationship with the Lord. Do they also affect our marriage and our relationships with other people, too? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, they do. They do. You know, and when you have a stony heart, you know, it, it, it really not only separates you in so many ways from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, but you know, your 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 wife or your husband, your children, your grandchildren, they all see that, you know, they all pick up pick up off of that stoniness and the hardness. And and it it, it actually is really a generational curse because, you know, your kids, you know, they develop the same habits. They just develop the same things and and um uh yeah, you know, because uh, it's again, it's a it's a generational curse. So you know, one person has it and passes it on, and and when you have the transformation of going from a stony heart to a fleshly heart, and people will notice that. My family did. My family. What did they say? You know, they were like, "What happened to you?" And I was like, "Well, like, I'm starting to follow Jesus," and they're like, "Oh." You know, they laughed and what have you. And, and uh, you know, I gave up all the booze, gave up all the the, uh, the music, what have you, and just totally did a 180. You removed and, everything that the Lord told yeah, you to remove. Exactly. And it, and it's not a one-time thing either. It constantly, you know, there's always going to be the Lord wants to remove those things that are not of you, of him, uh, from your hearts. Uh, but you know, when the Lord comes in to remove something, you know, one thing I want to point out is that uh, many times he, he will, he is so gentle when he removes things that are not of, of him from your heart. He'll remove it. And you won't even notice it. You just, you know, it just, go, you know, it's like, hey, I'm not an alcoholic anymore. I don't mm-hmm. smoke anymore. I don't do drugs. I don't hang out with the same people. You know, and it, it might be a few days or weeks or whatever before you even realize that you're not doing those things that you used to do. And and he is so gentle in that in that aspect, you know. Uh, and there are times when, you know, he has to be a little bit firmer, you know, like, you know, pull those things down and you're struggling, you're fighting. And like, 
hey, if you just give up, it'd go a lot easier. <laughs> if you just submit <laughs> exactly. with a heart, you know. He knows go, oh, better. He knows that. best. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it does, you know, when you have a hard heart, and people notice that. They really do. Especially your family, you know. Right. Your kids, your your wife or your husband, uh, you know, your mom and your dad, you know, things of that nature. Uh, and um, they notice that hardness there. That's they, so true. Pastor yeah. Reels, what happens to a church that is um, full of stony hearts? Well, uh, people, I've seen this in, in, in churches. And, uh, you know, that you, you stifle the move of God. You really stifle the move of the Holy Spirit. You know, you... You want to go to, you know, to the next level, but, you know, God can't really move in the way he wants to move because you're in the way. <laughs> you're in, your, your stoniness is in the way. And, uh, and you know, we're, you want to leave the, the church uh, um, in, in a fleshly man or, a, a, you know, nothing that's not moving with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, it, 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 you can only grow, go so far. And, so what and does then, a pastor do? Pastor needs to uh, be the example and and lead the the church, you know, in a, to a place of humility, corporately, you know, and and to really set the the example. Him, his wife, his children, what have you, uh, coming in before the altar, and and in a place of humility. And I have seen that many times. Was a very good pastors. They, they they realize hey we're not moving and as well as we as the way I want to see God move I see God coming in and you're all just kind of like you know the sheep are just resisting mm -hmm. uh, but you know it just it's an amazing thing um, I remember so you've actually seen a, a church transformed oh yeah yeah and and one of the great ways that um, great examples I've seen I'm not going to mention the church but uh, it was uh, um, the the pastor uh, led the service of foot washing, brought all the people up. It was a smaller church, you know, so he could do it, you know, and wash their feet. And an uh, um, amazing thing, you know, that sense of humility, it really broke things off of people. And it was just an amazing thing to see how God moved and it, it and how the Holy Spirit came in to restore and to heal and, and to forgive, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's an amazing thing. You know, and uh, it, those pastors, those those are the shepherds, you know, that you want close by, you know, want close to your heart as well. And because uh, and they're, they're good shepherds, they're good shepherds, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. Pastor Reels, um Imagine you're in front of in front of thousands of people, and many of them have stony hearts. You're there to give a sermon. What hope would you give to them? Hope of what encouraging words would you say to them? I want you to speak to them right now for like a minute or two to give mm. them hope. Amen. All right. I got a minute or two, huh? You sure I only got a couple minutes? I don't have all night. <laughs> <laughs> if you want more than two minutes, I can give you three, four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So those of you who are listening, um, bring your hearts just as they are. You know, jailhouse tats, needle marks, whatever it is. Just bring your, your heart with all the hurts, all the pains, what have you, uh, to the altar of the Lord. And and even if you don't have a heart that has all those issues, if you're uh, a believer and you want to draw closer to God, bring that heart there too uh, to the altar and allow Holy Spirit to, to move on your heart and allow his hands to come in and his hands took the nails on the cross for you and I. You must understand that, that he died on the cross because of a great love that he has for you. 
He is so full of compassion and mercy for his people right now. And he wants to heal your heart and remove that stoniness there and allow him to come in and, and don't push away his hands. Don't push away his hands. Allow him to come in and you just give that, that your, your heart to him and ask him to replace your heart heart with a, with a heart of flesh filled with the fruits of the spirit that the book of Galatians has. Uh, and, um, and he will do so. He will do so. And, uh, oh, man. Yes, he's doing it even now. Even now, as I'm speaking, he is moving upon your hearts and moving to remove that hardness that is there and to give you a heart of flesh. You don't have to have that heart of heart, that heart and heart anymore. Some of you have been carrying such a hard heart. For years and years and years, and, and, and the Lord is there right with you even now to remove that stoniness that is there and to give you a heart of flesh. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Reels. Pastor Reels, uh, real quickly, do you or have you met anybody um, who had a stony heart, let's say a recent testimony that you can share about somebody who you met mm. whose heart was transformed and this was fairly recent uh i do remember uh, um a group of young people I, I was doing a funeral for a young man and uh they were all gangbangers and we were out way out in the middle of the desert and as I preached, I could see God moving on these group of young people. Uh, they're all tattooed out, you know, gang signs, you know, bloods, crips, you name it. Uh, they were all there. But God was moving on those kids, man. It was an amazing time to see them. And, and, and they did give their hearts over. Uh, many of them gave their hearts over. It was, it was a, an amazing time. Uh, seeing God just move on on these young people, and they were giving, they're they're falling right at my feet. And, um, wow. Yeah, it was it was an. And this was at thing. the reservation. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was at a funeral. Actually, it was at the the funeral of my uh, worship leader. His son was uh, shot and killed, and uh, he asked me to come and and do the funeral. So I did. Uh, but uh, God really moved on, on that funeral and on the hearts of those young people. It was an amazing time, an amazing time. Wow. wow. Yeah. And, and you um, preach at a Apache reservation. Well, Pastor Rios, thank you so much for being on Faith City Outreach and for helping me exalt and glorify the Lord through your testimony and through your mm -hmm. sermon. Thank you so much. If you want to just close with a quick prayer. I would really appreciate it. All right. Father, we just come to you tonight. We're just so thankful. And I am so thankful for uh, Sister Mariana and her ministry, Lord. I pray that your hand and a blessing would be on her ministry. And, and Lord, for those of you who are listening, uh, you can say this quick prayer right now. You know, uh, you know, say this prayer with me real quickly. Dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And I ask for you to forgive me of my sins. I lay my hard heart down before your altar and ask you to replace it with a heart of flesh. I accept you as the Lord and Savior of my life. Come in and change me, Lord, and use me to spread the gospel, your word, your gospel to the world. I accept you as the Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith City Outreach can be heard daily, Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Arizona time and 7 p.m. Eastern time. Faith City Outreach thanks Global Women Christian Chamber of Commerce Embassy and Four Winds Ministries for being supporters. Psalm 117, praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples, for great is his love toward us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. 
You have been listening to Faith City Outreach with Marina Maria as she interviews Christian pastors and leaders to discuss scriptures and topics affecting the Christian community and to pray for the nations. If you need to contact Marina Maria, please email her at fcoprogram at gmail.com. That email again is fcoprogram at gmail.com. Until next time, Marina wants to remind you from Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The music used in this broadcast is used courtesy of zapswat.com.